Amen. Today, we want to thank God because of the opportunity he has given us again to be in this meeting. And uh, I'm sure he's going to bless us again. So begin to tell your mem- to family members, welcome them to today's meeting. God is faithful. He loves us. He loves marriage. And he wants us to be to have a happy home. All right. Today, we're looking at pride in general. What pride can do to your marital life? Pride, the hidden enemy of a sweet marriage. We are going to discuss it together. At any point in time, you can stop me and tell me that you're ready to talk. If you're on Facebook, you can write your comments or you can come to Zoom to make your contribution by yourself. And I'm trusting the Lord today that he's going to bless us immensely as we'll chat, as we'll discuss together on this very topic. I'm sure you do not know so much about it, but, or you do, but I'm sure that God is going to bless you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today, we're looking at pride. The wise man, that's King Solomon, who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, the book of Proverbs, and then the Song of Solomon, Songs of Solomon, <laughs> and at the time, canceled. And I know some of us will know that scripture very well. It says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty look before a fall. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. It says that, and again, in Proverbs 11, to talk about pride is a destroyer, you know. So, you know, as I grew up as a young man, I used to think that this particular verse was just a mere religious, you know, advice, moral instruction to help us, you know, to, to be humble. But as I, I, grew, I grew up with it. So, you know, so pride, when you miss, it's a tell you pride going before a fall. Pride going before a fall. And that's also is a powerful word because generally, if I tell you the answer, you know, there are some, there are some, there are some questions you know the answer. They say, so you can find the solution. The answer is that once there is pride, manifesting in your marriage, two things will be there. Either that there is a destruction or there will be a fall. But let's go on as we discuss it together. Because sometimes we don't... The Holy Ghost gave me a revelation of what pride is. Because I now knew that it's not just what the dictionary says that pride is. Because, oh, in fact, let me also say this before ever we start. Pride, there are a lot of things that pride is not, which will make mistake. Pride is not looking good. You see, there are men of God who like, they buy good clothes, they dress very well, they dress expensive. So people will say, oh, or oh, some will of God. My baby girl used to be like that, but now she's not like me. But that's what marriage can do to somebody. Marriage will make you, I'm a simple person. So my, God has also made her that way. So we're simple. But there are people who are gorgeous. There are people, if they want to dress big, they dress expensive. And people say they are proud. No, it's not true. But that's how they have decided to live. There are people, you know, who want to have, live in a good house. They live in. People want to put their children in the best schools. No. That is not pride. So, so say, oh, this is a very proud man. He, he went and put his children in an expensive school. That is not true. That is not what pride is. Let's look at pride, the definitions that the Holy Ghost gave me, and then we'll go to discuss it together. Remember, at any point in time, you can stop me and you can come in. Pride, number one. Pride is that thing in you that tells you how you must be treated, but less of how you should treat others. In this case, your spouse <coughs> or the guy you want to get married to mm-hmm. or the young lady you want to get married to. Pride is, especially married people now, pride is that thing that tells you how you must be treated, but less of how you should treat her on him. Number two, pride is that thing in you you know, that tells you what you should expect from her. Now, let me be using her. What I should expect from her. But less, little or nothing about what she should expect from me. I'm saying the same thing, but in different ways. Pride 
is what tell that particular thing in you that tells you how people should treat you. But you know how people should talk to you rather because we've already talked about how people should treat you. How people should talk to you, but le little or less about how you should talk to people. I know married people, you know what I'm talking about. As I'm, I fail to tell you, how do you know that you have pride in your life? By the leading of the Holy Ghost is by these five things I'm saying today. Number one, pride tells you how you should be treated, but he doesn't tell you how, how you should treat others. If you, has, you have seen that in you, or you have seen that in your spouse. I know you say, oh, pastor, you are talking about my wife. You are talking about my husband. Pride tells you what you should expect, but little or nothing about what they should expect from you. Jesus said in Luke, Luke chapter 6, I think verse 32 or 36, he says, say what you want others to do for you, mm -hmm. you should first of all do it to them. Okay. So pride doesn't tell you that. Pride tells you what you should expect from them, not what they should expect from you. And what the third one, which I have talked about, pride is what it talks, how you should, it tells you how you should talk to people. When they get you, according to you, when they get, get the person angry, you tear them off. When your spouse gets you angry, you tear her off, you tear him off. But, you, but once they speak to you half in that manner, the whole house will be in, on fire. But you have been talking to the person that way since, and the person didn't react. But now the person is talking to you, there's a problem. Number four, pride also is that thing in you that emphasizes who you are, but little or nothing about who others are, especially your spouse. This is the, this one and the last one are the thing that the Lord was showing me this morning. About, because the Lord was asking me this question this morning and he was just making, ministering to me when I was praying for the program that the point is that people don't even know who this their spouse who, the, who this person is this person I call my wife this person I call my husband who the person is because I was reasoning the kind of things what, what I'm going to be discussing in the in the, uh, the, on, in the practical discussion of this month, we're going to be looking at abuse, the causes, the way out. So that's what, when he gave me that topic, we are looking at ah, how would on earth, because I, I start, I, I imagine in my spirit, man, how somebody will be hitting a woman being, whether man or woman this time. So, so because the person doesn't even know who this person is. So pride tells you, emphasizing who you are, but less. Little or less, nothing about who the other person is. Pride is that thing in you that measures on your own feelings. But little or nothing about the feeling of others, especially your spouse. It measures on your feelings, your feelings, how you feel. You have how I feel, but you don't consider how he or she feels. That's pride. I'm sure you didn't know it before. People think that pride is when we're like this. Now, pride is the mother of racism. I'm just, this one is on the general background, on general note now. The mother of racism in the whole world. Because it, it makes you know that your color is better. Your race is better. Your family is better. Your family is better. Tri pride is the mother of tribalism in nations where you have tribalism. Pride is what makes you that you say you are born to rule. And the other people we are born to serve you. Yeah. That's, pride. That's pride. Like we have in my home nation. Pride is what makes a group of people say that they are born to rule the others. And the others we are born to serve them. Even when they are more, they, it doesn't matter how high intelligent they are. It's pride. That's the, that's the point. That's, you, well, that's what have buried nations. That's what have buried marriages. Pride is the mother of sectionalism. Pride is also the mother of every man's inhumanity to man. Yeah. That's the, it's pride that makes you have only your feeling. You treat a man, you match, you are matching somebody. The person is crying. You are not feeling the pain. 
in this case now, your spouse, you don't feel what she feels. You don't know. You don't feel what he, he or she is feeling. You you you're only feeling no. what you what you're concerned about yourself. How he feels or she feels. No, it's not important. It important. It's, it's how you feel. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's pride. Pride tells you that you are better than every other person. You are better than her. You are better than him. Pride is what brings comparison in you, especially marriages. It's that you compare family by family. It's pride. Pride is what brings comparison, the mother of that. Pride is what tells you that you deserve it, but she does not deserve it. You deserve to be respected. You know, pride is what makes people not to submit. And pride is what makes you not to love. So you are waiting for her submission. Pride tells you, wait until she, she, until she submits. That's when you love her. her. You love her according to the level of her submission. It's pride that tells you that. Pride tells you not Have you not known something the Lord was showing me this morning? That God, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Say, said, have I known something about our God? I said, yeah, tell me more. Say that our God is not proud. Take note. And that's why he wants us to be like him. God is not proud. When you offend him, he forgives you and doesn't remember it. Let me not forget to say, pride is the mother of unforgiveness. Because God is not proud. So when you offend him, he forgives you and it's over. But a proud man will not forgive. Because he, what is the, he tells you that he make, the pride makes him know that you, didn't, you, are, you are not supposed to have done that. You're not supposed to have done that. <laughs> to the married, please listen to carefully. Let me let you know this. I must say again, many marriages that are down today, marriages that are in the grave today, we are buried by pride. Mm -hmm. Not because of the error of one of the spouses. No. Brother, you can challenge me anywhere. Sister, you can challenge me. It was pride that made her say no. On, because he cheated on me mm -hmm. until he comes back to my father, father's house to come and beg me. The man also, the same pride test, he said, oh, she was the one that walked out. After all, she had done things like that before. And she had done things because of that. I wouldn't go for her. Pride had buried marriages. Pride is what had brought some marriages to their knees today. And not just the errors of the partners. No, not, not the errors. It is pride. Yeah, pride. How to say pride is what tells you not to, to accept your faults. You, you understand me? Pride tells you not to accept your faults. I have, as a young person, I have worked with you. I've seen people have been as I have been growing. I see people who are in mistakes. See, there is nothing that kills a marriage like not accepting your faults. Because you are, when you're not accepting your faults, you are calling the other partner a fool. You're calling your partner a fool. You are the one at fault. Instead of you to accept your fault, you look for a way to justify it. You're looking for a way to justify it. You're looking for a way to be diplomatic about it. See, pride is what tells you, makes you not to say, I am sorry. I am sorry. Please, I'm, love, I'm sorry. It, it was a mistake. Now, pride is also what tells the other person who they told, I am sorry, not to accept it. Say, no, you, you, I, I don't deserve that you treat me that way. Don't, I don't deserve you treat me that way. I don't deserve it. You, you, you were not supposed to do it. In what places? People, people, it's pride that makes people, even fire people who should not be fired. In fact, some, some, Eddie, some those who work with big, big boys, who work, it's pride that makes them to lose good workers. And then finally, push themselves into the hand of bad workers. Pride keeps you from seeing your errors, your faults. It was it's only pride is what makes you to see her fault every time. You cannot see your fault. You know, pride is what makes men that thing that makes men inconsiderate. And the pride is the mother of quick temper. You see, why are you always angry with her? At, at, at the time. And he's, oh, my wife, you shouldn't have done that. As, as Holy Spirit warned me, and said so that I knew that that was the spirit of pride grew, trying to grow in, inside of me. When you don't, do, you don't, you, you're always angry at what he did, what he did. 
said, no, this thing is not of God. I prayed, I said, God, God removed it. Go, pride is the mother of quick temper against your spouse. Every time you're angry with him, angry with her, because as far as you're concerned, he's not supposed to do that. You know, pride is evil. As far as husband and, husbands and wives are concerned. Now, Beth, to, to the single, before we just look at them, my baby will come up. Pride is that thing that keeps single people from refusing, especially ladies, mm -hmm. for ladies now, they keep refusing proposals. You look down on people. Because mm -hmm. you are looking at the height of the guy, the makeup of the guy, the, the, what the, mm -hmm. the kind of job the guy is doing, the, you know, who the guy is, the family background. Mm -hmm. At the end, that same pride will push you into a grave of the person you think, because the person has packaged himself like an angel, like a rich man, and then you enter. Pride is what is responsible. There's not, it's not your father's village or mother's village. It's pride in you that pushes you there. Pride is what have made parents push their sons and daughters into an early grave of a marriage because they wanted him, him or her to marry a, a person of class, a family of, family of rather, of class, a family of class. Where is she from? Who is the father? Say, ah, I said, no, I, my son will not marry that person. Or who is the father? Say, no, they want to marry a guy of class. Even if, the, and that's what have made ladies to enter into the hands of drug pushers because they have class, they have money, they have influence. <laughs> Pride is what is responsible. Let me tell you, ordinarily, most of them who entered there wouldn't have entered there. Some people who are at home today, it was pride that made their parents to drag them out of the marriage of marrying the young guy that they loved, that they would have lived very well with. But because of that, the, 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 the person didn't belong to the class. The parents pushed the person out. Some of them are at home today. Some guys have now reached the level where ladies are now afraid of them to your married. Pride is what is responsible. Pride. It is pride that makes ladies, finally, I must tell us, fight the other lady. Fight to get a guy who is coming for the other lady. Because in their own assessment, she's not beautiful enough to marry to that rich guy. I should be the one. I should, I'm better than her. So they fight to take away the guy that is coming for their friends, sometimes their best friend, they go behind, okay? Madam, it's pride that is in you that have made you to do that. And you know what? Some people succeeded in taking the guy. Some guys succeeded in taking the lady and they are married today. And in that same marriage, there is fire. Why? Because they were not even originally meant for each other. It was, it, was, it was a manipulated marriage. It was a manipulated love. So it's not just a time to begin to talk definitions, but I just wanted you to make, make you to know the things that will make you identify pride. Now, are we here to define pride? No, we're here to look for a way out. I want to offer some solutions by the Holy Ghost. Five of them to the unmarried and five of them to the married. First to the married. Five. I will list them. My baby girl will come up. Number one. If you want to keep pride in your life, in your marriage, put him or her first. I'm, don't, I'm not saying, I'm not talking about grammar, theory. Practically, consciously, put him or her first in everything. Once she's forced, once he is forced, you discover now that you are under. In your mind, you are under. So you, you are, she's forced. So baby, what do you want us to do? How do you want us to do it? So it's no more like, how do you feel with this thing I want to do with you? This thing I want us to do, put him or her first, number one. Number two, consider his or her feelings first. That's one of the things that God has used to me. Consider her feelings first. There are many things I want to do. When I remember how she feels or how she will feel about it, I leave it. 
consider his or her feelings first. Number three, you see, number three is very, very important. Listen carefully. Always be the first to say, I am sorry, practically. Because proud people don't say sorry. Once you learn how to begin to say sorry, accepting your fault, pride will start dying in you. Number four, you, it's very important. You must, you can't do, you might not be able to achieve it alone. I must tell you the truth, especially if pride have entered their veins, yeah, 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 entered their system. I've watched proud people, they don't even know they are proud, they are, their life is going that way and it's causing them problems. Hand your heart over to God because he only is the one that will walk on you and help you by his spirit. You may not be able to do it. And finally, you have to die. Jesus said, except in the seed of wheat falls to the ground in Luke and dies. So he cannot bear fruit. If he must bear fruit in this marriage, you have to die. There is no man or woman on earth who is living who can be a good husband or a good wife. Listen, challenge me. There is no living man. I don't mean living Britain. There is no man who says, I'm a real man. Or a woman who says, I'm a real woman. Because that's what your friends will tell you. You are not a real man. You mean you have accepted that? No, you are not a real man. Yes, tell them you are not. Because if you're a real man, you can't live with a woman. No real man, no real man can live with a woman. It's only a man who has taken Jesus. Bible says in the book of Philippians, maybe you can, when, when we have, if we have all the time, Philippians chapter two, mm -hmm. for Jesus to be able to save man, mm -hmm. he has to strip himself off of everything that made him God. Philippians two, and that's why the charge is there. If you ask me to give you the charge, let this man be in you, which is also so in Christ Jesus. Verse six, read six. Okay. Who being in the form, of, being God, in the form of God, thought it not thought it robbery, not robbery to be God, one with God, but made himself, but made himself of, of no reputation, reputation and took upon and him the form of the servant, a servant and was made, and in, was the made in the likeness of man, mm -hmm. people who he created by himself. And that's why the world is still misunderstanding Jesus. I say, ah, no, he's a, he's a son of Mary. Some say, ah, he's a prophet. Some say, ah, he's one person that lived, then God walked with him. No, that's God who came for man because he had an assignment. The assignment was to save man. Okay, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, brothers, no real man can be a good husband. And it is the real men that are proud. No real woman can be a good wife. You can't submit. Because women have problem of pride. They have problem of rebellion. No real woman can submit to a man. That was the, even the problem of man from the beginning, from Mama Eve. No real woman can be a, a godly woman. He must be a dead woman to submit to a man, to respect him. And then there will be sweetness in that home. By the way, there is no marriage that can have sweetness, except him. the husband is dead. That is the only time you can love a woman. That is the only time you can be like God. Because God loves us, in, because women, this is my wife here, and even your own wife, they have their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Until you, if you start looking at the weaknesses of a woman, you can't love her. Mm -hmm. See me, I have many weaknesses. If she start looking at my weaknesses, she cannot submit to me, she can't respect. That is how it is in your own marriage. No real man, no real woman can be a good man a good husband or a good wife. So you have to die. That is when pride, as you are dying, pride dies. To the unmarried, listen, number one, think, what, what, what is the advice to the unmarried? Think less of today. That is, think less of the temporary. Think less of today, and, but more about the future. Think less of the temporary. Think more of the permanent. Number two, be mindful of the things that are not seen in him or her than the things that are seen. Because everything you are seeing today can change. That money baron you are seeing today can, change, can become a poor man tomorrow. But the, the, the treasures, the possession, the, what am I saying? The potentials rather in him or her 
cannot be taken away by anything. So think more about the things that are not seen than the things that are seen. Yeah, number three, learn to give people a chance. First, hear them out because there could be great treasure in them which is lying, residing inside. They will now listen carefully. Some of us have missed it out. Later, you now see you later after five years. No, just take this young small girl that is here for, as my wife now. If she by the time she met me, let me tell us this short story. In this, my father was a very poor man, he was just poor with in a mad house. Number two, my mother was just a peasant farmer. You know, I I was. I didn't have money. When she entered my house, what was there was one bed, one locker. Locker. The locker I used to locker I used to go for secondary school. That's my table. That's what I asked her. I said, "Yeah, you say you love me. Say yeah. You want to marry me? Look at my house. Look at my father. Look at everything. That's my totality." Say yes. Yeah, she says she will still marry me because of what she's seen in me. See, talk up and today now that thing she's seen is her started manifesting. You know. Yeah, so, and then compare two of us that time, her father, her parents, her family, how high they were. Look, forget about the, the things that, these things that are seen. Look at the things that are not seen. If you want to make a right choice, if you want to get the right person. Number four, because of time, put God first. You cannot do it the best, make the best choice, I must tell you, on your own. She wouldn't have made the best choice. She would do, ah, is this human being I want to marry? This one that is, I was lanky like this that time. <laughs> is it everybody, people were, so you know, put God first. Let God show you the person's future. Yeah. The, the greatest mistakes of ladies and men today is they marry the present. God is not showing you the future. Because if you see the person's future, that two of you will be fighting every day, that <laughs> you won't go to marry. You won't go. If you know that this lady will not submit to you, it will be a problem, fire in your heart. If you won't marry her now, though she's beautiful, because no man wants to have heat in his house. Every man wants to have peace. Both the poor ones and the rich ones, everybody, the, mm -hmm. the, every man wants peace. If you have known that this woman will give you fire tomorrow, you wouldn't have married her. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. So only God can show you the person's future. If you have known that that young guy that you have despised would be like 15 years ago, look at me now. Just look at 15 years. Look at the door 15 years ago and look at the door today. Nobody would have taken me apart from her that time. <laughs> See, so, so put God first. God is the one that will show you. Then finally, you have to die to get the best of wife and husband. The same thing I told the, the, the married, because if you are ego as a man, is that if that you are, if that you are woman's pride, say, because people are, one of the problems she had that time is people say, introduce your husband, is this one. You know, you are thinking about if they say mm. I should introduce my you husband. You see that same pride? You see this you one? Know, you are thinking about. Mm. So, you, so you are thinking about yourself no. now and not future. If they say you should introduce your husband, is it that one? That one. No money, no rank, nothing, nothing. I stop here. You have to die to say, God, I do what you want me to do. I want you. You can come up at any time to make a contribution, ask your questions or on the chat or through an email, or you want to contribute. Anytime you can raise your hand, we'll recognize you. God bless you, baby. Wow, <clears throat> wonderful. Yes, you've really talked much about this pride. And I don't know if there's any other thing to add. <laughs> but let me just say that, like everything he's talking about, now, mm. pride is a sin, in case you don't know. Mm. Pride is a sin, you know. I read Proverbs 8.13. I also read Proverbs 16.5. And I also read James 4.6. And I looked at these three scriptures. Okay. God hates pride. It's not pride is not a virtue. In case you don't know that you're parading yourself, you know, about 
claiming superiority over everyone, mm -hmm. family class, mm -hmm. background, mm -hmm. academic background, where you are, you know, the level you are, all those things, they don't make sense. Mm -hmm. They are not important because God hates pride. He's, he doesn't take glory in any man who is proud. He detests, Bible says God detests, he resists the proud. Mm. So if God, if God can resist you, a man can also resist you. Mm. Even everything on earth can resist you because you're proud. You know, it's not something to brag about. And this pride we are talking about is dangerous. Pride is a killer. Mm. Like he said, many marriages today are dead because of pride. Some that are just managing to cohabit. Mm. They are already dead, though, but they are just, you know, together, patching up. Maybe for, for either people to say that they have separated. Mm. Mm. I left my marriage. So they are just trying to patch up, to maintain, to manage, but they are gone. Mm. Some marriages today are also in mm, crisis, serious crisis still because of this same pride. Some are living separately, still because of this pride. Like he said, you don't want to call him and apologize. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want to come down, you know, so you guys can talk. So you guys can come to an understanding. Everyone is claiming right. It's pride that's making you to claim right in that relationship. You have decided to move on and live with your kids alone. You don't want to apologize to him. So it will look like, it will look like you are the one that apologized since you are doing everything, it is pride. Mm. That is just the, 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 the undertone, the thing speaking from, you know, under. Mm. It is pride. Forget about every other excuse, every other reason you're giving. It is simply pride, you know, because you, you can't imagine yourself coming down so low to apologize to him or her. Who does he think he is? Who does she think she is? You know, I met him, I met her, whoever she is mm. today. So sure. why should I, you know? And it's because of why should I, a whole me. There is no hole there. Because when you go to the mortuary, you see all the holes, all the people who claim heaven and earth. Just look at them. And imagine where, where they are burying them. Everybody is still the same six feet. And some religion even burn them, their cups. Mm. You know, some don't even bury them where they just use mats and just fold them. This is the whole meal. This is the, the same person who claimed everything, heaven and earth. A whole me at my level. Hmm? You mean I should come down and apologize? And you see, marriages are being torn apart because of pride. I will never agree. I will never accept over my dead body. It is pride. When you hear people say it's over my dead body, it is pride. And pride is very demonic. Mm. Very demonic. Demonic. Pride is demonic. It comes in and then everything begins mm. to go astray. Things begin to fall apart. Mm. Before you knew it, people separate. And innocent children have been suffering as a result of pride in yeah. parents. Because this one is here claiming right. This one is there claiming right. Mm -hmm. They don't want to listen. Nobody wants to listen to each other. Pride is very dangerous. It has done a lot of harm. There is no good thing about pride. Because, you know, let's call it spade a spade. It's pride that will make you think that, ah, a classic woman like you, a classic lady like you, is even because I accepted to marry you, a peasant, you know? And today, when I give others in my own house, I paid for, I built. I pay the bills, I pay the bills, and uh, you, you want to do anyhow. It mm. is pride that make you that will make you look down on that person. You feel you marry, that is not your class. Mm -hmm. And then when he talks, you, you, you disrespect. It is pride that makes you walk out on him. Say, please leave my house, get out here. You call the police. I want you out of this house this minute. If you don't do it, it's pride. You know, it's pride that makes you wake up one day and you feel that you're not good enough for me. Because there's someone out there, or you feel you have arrived, you are making, you have made all the money. Mm -hmm. My dear, is pride. Though. Let's call it spare the spare. If that thing is pride, that will make you feel that you have arri arrived, that you, with your social status, that the height you have attained in the society. I don't mm -hmm. need any man to, to do nonsense with me, yeah. to toy around with me. That is pride. Because we, are, we, we don't celebrate pride. It is not a virtue. So I don't know for people who condone it. For me, it is not, it is not supposed to be at all. When, by, when you read Philippians chapter 2, my God, my, my God, read Philippians chapter 2 now, imagine a whole God taking the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. He forgot about who he is. So when I look at it, I say, what can I really be in life? What academic height do you think you, you have attained that will make your head to begin to pop up? You know, what, what kind of money do you think you will have that will make your head to begin to shake, that begin to look down on people? Begin to treat people with disrespect, you know, begin to, you know, mistreat people. You can wake up and say, you get out of my house.
because you feel you have arrived. No, a whole God left a whole prince, a whole God left his throne, came down, took the form of a servant that they even killed him, even accepted to die just like that. Hmm? Without any resistance, he couldn't oppose to it. And then you that he even died for, we that we are nothing. We, are, we come to this earth, we are parading ourselves. We can't just humble ourselves. And he told us in that same Philippians, he taught us humility. Mm. And I have come to know that if you apply humility in marriage, hmm, like all these things he's talking about as a way forward, if you bring humility in marriage, there is no marriage that cannot succeed. Yeah. If you apply humility, there's no marriage. if you can throw away this demon called pride, pride. Hmm? There's no that can and walk. decide to wear the garment of humility that the Bible told us about, your marriage must surely succeed. Hmm? It, it doesn't make you a mugu. Humility doesn't, people say, mm, that mumu. you mean I should take the rubbish that woman is taking in that house? You mean I should be like the man? Hmm. It's not wise, it's very foolish. Those ones are the wise ones. Hmm. Because whatever you are doing to make your marriage work, to stay alive for your kids, hmm? to make your life sweet, with or without money, money is not everything. No. Hmm? Whatever you are doing to be happy with each other, that is the ultimate. That is the ultimate. Not when they will tell you, don't agree. He says that one, give him this one. Eh? I beg, leave the house, Joe. Those ones who are even advising you, leave the house, Joe. Leave him, Joe. They want to have what you have. Mm. They're even envious. They're jealous of you. But because they don't know how to express it, so they're waiting for one little thing you will comment about your relationship. And then they will begin to give you bad advice, you know, out of what they are feeling towards you. And you will think they are friends, that they are giving you the right advice. No, they are merely deceiving you and fooling themselves. So pride is a destroyer. It's a killer. Mm. Mm? It's the reason behind many divorce cases we have today. Mm. I can't stay with that, that kind of person. In fact, it can't be under the same roof. It's pride, though. Once, because once pride starts growing, you start seeing him or her. Mm -hmm. As no more good. As less. The person is mm. now less. It's less human. Mm. You, you mean I even married this kind of person? You, that you begin to look down on the person. Something has happened. You see, something has happened. Yeah. Pride has taken over. And you know that you may not really necessarily be proud at the beginning, mm. but as, as the marriage is going on, devil can introduce this evil weapon mm. to destroy your marriage. I have a question there, right? That, so that yeah. Can. So, right. <laughs> right. That. Yeah. We have a question we want to deal with you. Okay. He away. said, what if we do all to make our union work? Mm -hmm. All we'll see or hear is bitterness. What are we going to do? Thank you for the question. What if we do all to make our union mm. work? All we see bitterness. or hear is a bitterness. bitterness. Things that will make you to be bitter, right? What should we do? First is, remember that in this case, from the question you ask us now, it means that you are not actually the person who have this problem. Mm -hmm. You are the one who is doing all. I assume that yeah, to make it work. you are doing everything to make it work. Yeah. But the other person doesn't want to know. He is, is still giving you bitterness. Mm. Remember one of the points I gave to you. In this case now, then we get um, Proverbs chapter 21 so that the person can write it down. It is no more your problem. Okay. Proverbs 21. The, the king's heart. Proverbs 21, one, read. The for, king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. The king's heart, that yeah. man's heart, that woman's yeah. heart yeah. is in God's hands. Yeah. And uh, what did he say God can do? Give up. He said, like a river of water. He like a stream. Wherever he like lives. a stream of water, God has the capacity the to turn that heart mm. towards you again. Yeah. yeah. So don't give up. Don't give up. Go back to God and kneel down. Remember, when you're already married, there is a mistake. Because you, the person that is asking the question might be asking for another, for another person. person. So, yeah. so I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everybody. Yeah. So when we marry, it doesn't take long. You now discover that this person is not my right person. I'm going to somewhere. Listen. And once we discover that this person is not my right person, we give up 
we lose hope, mm -hmm. we'll start bouncing back, we'll start reacting. Mm -hmm. But that is not what it should be. Now that you are married, I'm talking to the married people, not to the unmarried, please. I'm talking to the married now. I'm talking to the married. Now that you are married, there is nothing that humility cannot help you accomplish. You from let's start from you, like uh, my brother brother Tidu will always say. Let's start from you, who is involved here. You have to bring yourself down like Jesus did, and humble yourself. Number two, you have to still have patience, and number three, you cannot do it alone. You have to bring that man's heart, that woman's heart, before the Lord. Because bitterness itself is an evil spirit mm -hmm. that changes the, the atmosphere of a marriage. It's an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. Bitterness is an evil spirit that can change, that changes the atmosphere of a, of a home. If a man is bitter, he pours it on the wife and on the children. If a woman is bitter, she pours it on the husband and on the children. The whole at the atmosphere of the house is bitter. Yeah. So it's an evil spirit that you deal with on your knees. Yeah. You use prayers to cast that spirit out, number one. Number two, you need to bring that man's heart, that woman's heart before the Lord and say, God, turn the heart of my husband, mm -hmm. turn the heart of my wife. Yeah. I am a living witness to tell you that everything I have become today Everything my wife has become today, I can testify it anywhere. I, anytime I, she has an issue and I complain, God say, you don't know the way again. Just talk to me about her. Right. And anytime she's coming to challenge me for anything, it's a waste of time because you won't get it. She just, once, once she speaks to God about the thing, the thing will change. Simple and short. Life goes. So learn how to speak to God. Hmm about your marriage. By the way, next week, we also have to pray for the marriages again. So it's a, every second Saturday, we'll use it as a time to pray for your marriage. So try and be here if the person inside, will, but is always remember to pray yeah. inside. Yes, we have another yeah. com okay. comment here. Before, yeah. This is another question. Eh? But before, we, because this one is taking us out entirely. Okay. Okay, let me just, so, yeah, so let, me, can respond to let me just finish, uh, add by saying, yeah. number one, that particular person that is giving you that bitterness, please stop being bitter. Mm. Because bitterness, like he said, is not from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep honoring that person above yourself. Mm. That person that's giving you that bitterness, keep honoring him, please. Mm. Like Romans 12, 10 will advise us, and you yourself be humble. Try to be humble yourself. Read that Philippians 2 very well and imbibe all those things, you know? Think, let him be first, put him first in everything. Mm. Like all that he said. Do it that way. Mm? But don't forget to treat him with compassion mm. and be gentle. Don't forget to treat him or her with compassion, please. Very important. You know, when somebody is always causing you pain, making you feel bitter, sad, there's this tendency that you always want to react, mm. to give him back. You understand? Like retaliate, pay him back. Mm. Please don't. Mm? Treat him with compassion and gentleness. Mm? Try and do that. Be patient with him mm. or her. Always forgive. And don't try to change him or her. Like he said, brother, ask God to change you. Mm. Yeah, ask God to change you as a person. Yeah. Because if God changes you, eh, you, change, you, change. you, 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 you accommodate him. Mm. And by the time he or she sees that mm, this changed. person I'm trying to do this thing is not working out, mm. you, you, you have started breaking him down already. Once you apply all these things. Or her. Mm, him, or, him or her, whoever yeah. that is involved, please. Sometimes, if I must build on this briefly, Sometimes the change you want to see in our spouses should begin with us. Yeah. Once you change, the person will change. Yeah. God wants us to change. Okay. Yeah. The second question. Is it? Or it's possible there are things you have been doing that have been bringing that up. So once you change, the change will come. Okay. Yeah. The second question is asking how we can identify a partner that has pride. Because many persons pretend they love wow. these days. <laughs> That's wow. the question. Wow. Well, if you have started, if you have started listening from your beginning, mm. yeah, all these things, my beloved said from the beginning, mm. they are tips that you watch out for it. Why you are interacting with that person? Mm. Why you are discussing with that person? It's mm. all about the person. 
the person is showing you sign that it's all about me. Mm. Talks about him, him, ha, ha. You know, doesn't have room for another person. Mm. Doesn't have time to appreciate other people. Mm. It's all about himself. Feels so superior. Mm -hmm. He's always bringing opinions to make you know that even when you're uh, uh, commending somebody, the person doesn't like it. Uh, is that anything? Mm. All those things are small, small signs the person gives to you for you to know that this is this type. Of, this, this is the type, the proud type. Thank but you. not when somebody has self-respect, please. Yeah. Self-respect and dignity, don't mistake it to be pride. Right. Yeah, because Remember, yeah, before. some people carry themselves with high dignity. And I, I take my case that. Yeah. I say, my dear, don't mind what they say. It doesn't make you a proud person. But I just want you to have self, self-respect mm. and dignity as a man, as a boy. Mm. You know, you don't need to look down on yourself. Be proud of whom God has made you. Mm. No matter how you are. Are you short? Are you, are you tall? Be very Black. proud and confident yeah, of, of whom God has made you to be. Yeah. Don't feel intimidated. Because no. even here, they tell me that they want to be like me i say what mm -hmm. to mean that you want to have my color my yeah. complexion and our people want to die, be like you so i'm <laughs> changing their skin just to be like you that one say oh lillian your skin is beautiful in my place of work see them they won't let me rest i'm like you mean it yeah you know and the thing is giving me more and more confidence every day to be so proud of my complexion as in my color black. you know my <laughs> color is the best i don't care it is not proud though some people are like that self-respect dignity it doesn't make a man proud you know but Things that he has said at the beginning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for taking us back there. Maybe the person was not there at the beginning. Let me tell you this. There is no way you can stay with a proud man if you have listened to my message at the beginning and you wouldn't know. The reason, like you said, is because people don't even know what pride is. We think that pride is part of what she said. We think that pride is dressing well. We think that pride is carrying yourself well. I think that pride is for those who are married, putting your children, having, having desire for high things, you know, having desire for good, good, things. good things. It's not pride. No. You, me, like I always tell her, we are not people from different backgrounds. You know, I came from a very quiet background. So great things don't move me. She came from a higher background. So she's the one dragging me, <laughs> dressing me away. Very well. So I can wear anything. So, but let's leave that. Now, so, Having desire for good things, working towards them is not pride. What is pride is when you finish yourself in order to get that thing. Now, but let's leave that now. Let me answer your question straight. You cannot live with a, see a proud man without knowing because of these five things I said today. Number one, a proud person simply tells you yeah, that treating him or her first, yeah, the treatment you give to him or her comes first, number one. Number two, a proud person is the, is the one that expects more from you and gives you back less. Number three, a proud person expects you to talk to him or her with respect, but doesn't talk to you with respect. And even then- others. <laughs> or Even like you said, the person pretends, Abby, all these things I'm saying to you now, the person might be doing them very well to you. Listen, to you. Thank you, baby, for that. Mm -hmm. But then to another person, another lady, to another man, he does it, he or she does it in the way I've said it. Then you know this person is proud. He's just pretending because he or she wants to get you. A proud person emphasizes himself, himself, things about the person and nothing's about you. But what if the person is not doing it to you? But what of your parents? What of your friends? Once you talk about them, say no, 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 no. Forget about them. Anybody who cannot accept your friends now, that you can, your parents, your family members, now that you are not married, the person cannot accept them when you are married. It's a simple thing. The fifth one is a proud person talks about how he or she feels. He emphasizes, emphasizes his or her feelings more than yours. But if the person is doing it well with you, doing it well with you, check how he or she is doing it with the people around you, the people around her too, family members of yours, of hers even. Sometimes you might not even know it from your own family members, from his or her own family members. Anybody, any man who doesn't care for for the family today, and you are a lady, especially the mother, 
the sisters, and you are thinking that the person can care for you tomorrow, you are making a very big mistake. Yeah. Any person who doesn't have regard for other men, other women outside, and you think the person will have regard for you tomorrow, you think you are, I must bet you you are making a very big mistake. So you have to look at the environment. The person should tell you stories, what happened at place of work, what he did and how the person, and what he said, and how he said, he said, you mean you said that? Say, yeah, you keep quiet. You already know who the person can be. So that, these are the signs you used to. But finally, please, I must also add, I must also add, you need God to reveal people to, to you. you. Yeah. There are people who have dated drug addicts and they didn't know they take drugs. There are people who have dated and robbers. They didn't know they, those are and robbers. There are, there are guys who have dated club girls. They never knew. In fact, ladies have the capacity of dating three men at the same time, and none of them will know. So any man can deceive you. Any yeah. woman can deceive you. Only God can help you. Only God Through the spirit of can help you by the spirit of discernment. Mm. You need him. You can't do it alone. Yeah. By the grace of God, we are going to be kicking off the marriage school. We are going to announce healing time from tomorrow. Who, these are the things that are handled at the beginning of your life. We're going to be starting marriage school. And where the Lord have told us to start is at this point of the beginners. We're going to have a school for them. Train them how to know all these things. How to know the person they are marrying. To know what marriage is to know what to expect from marriage, to know the benefits of marriage, the purpose of God for marriage, mm -hmm. to know personality traits and how to handle, know who you can marry, know yourself, and other things that is in the curriculum which God has helped us and is helping us to work on. At the last Sunday of this, uh, of this particular month, we're going to be kicking off and we're going to tell you more about the time, it, it, though it's going to be 1.30, our own time, and so that everybody will be part of it. So, specifically for those who are interested, the would-be who want to marry, who register. It's free of charge. It's our time. That's what the Lord has charged us to do. The Lord said, catch them young, train them from the beginning. Because once they know how to live, how to identify the right person, we're going to also look at dating, courtship, and wedding. That's part of the courses we're going to be looking at before you graduate. You're going to handle all the, be through all the contact hours. So this is the reason. I thank God, thank God is coming out at this time because people need to be trained. People are trained to be engineers. People are trained to be pastors. People are trained for everything. But nobody's trained anybody for marriage. And that's why people are having problems. So the Lord has brought charges for this, to be, start a marriage school for the younger ones and for those who need uh, problems to be solved. So take note of that and put it in your itinerary. It's going to be coming up at the end of this month. All right, we we'll have a question or a response. Hmm. Okay, now the guy is saying that you can't speak to him, that no man can speak to him, hmm. except his mom. Hmm. And the, the mom in question is late. Hmm. What are we going to do? Oh. Hmm. What he's trying to say is that nobody can talk to me I hear. I'm not ready to listen to anybody. Hmm. That is the pride we are talking about. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a serious matter to have somebody who has that kind of mm. pride in him. Like we said, you have to commit it to God and you yourself have to be humble. Mm -hmm. Have to Don't take it to heart. Don't take it personal, please. Mm -hmm. with him. Don't be bitter with all this because these are distractions. All these things are the things that will spoil your mind that will make you to, mm, the person who think about quitting, leaving the marriage mm -hmm. because such person stands to be incorrigible yeah. and it's very difficult to put up with one who is. But what you do is you work on yourself, you know, to adjust. Because why you pray for him or her, mm. that God should change him. You also what are you doing? Work on yourself, okay? Just be patient, be compassionate with him. Yeah, thank you, mommy, for that. Okay. See, nobody can talk to him except when he's a mm. mother, mm. and the mother is not there again to talk to him. Mm. Now, I'll <laughs> talk to him or her, as the case yeah. might be, because yeah. we're not talking to one person. Yeah. It's a question for everybody. Yeah. Now. I, have, I want to also remind you again mm -hmm. that there is one person that can talk to, that can talk to everybody on mm -hmm. earth, his, even at the same time. His heart is in his hand. That is the Holy Spirit. So the last, the Holy is, Spirit is can thing. talk to him mm -hmm. or her. Simple. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged. Maybe I've not tried it before. Mm -hmm. 
or the person have not tried it before, try it from today. Say, Holy Spirit, do you know what? I, okay, let me tell you my own secret. Anything I want my wife to do, because you need to know who women are. If you're a man, women naturally they are hating. Women naturally they are stubborn. <laughs> you don't move in. Because I, Reverend Otomoba says, if, if, even encourage when you want to marry a woman, who when you want to stand up, you must say, hey, where are you going to? You tell us. You see, that you still marry a woman that is like dummy. And I say, Oga, my wife is like anything that you have to explain to her. So women are naturally that. So even when you have to, you have to ask, they have to ask you why, why is, why, why? is this thing? Why, 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 why should this? Of course, do it's this? like that. Even why kids, should we do this? when you tell kids something, they would ask <laughs> so you why. If you I know? want her, if I know that this matter, she's going to win me, I would not have sufficient things. Mm. I tell the Holy Spirit to tell her. When the Holy Spirit tells her, either she brings it up to me, or when I now present it, she say, yeah, that thing you said is true. Anything that I didn't succeed in the realms of the Spirit, speaking to the Lord about her, some of them have, 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 they have, they have, they have met some challenge, have met some resistance that I didn't like, and I must tell you the truth. So, so don't be thinking that is a is this kind of a the person is, the person is, the person yeah. is so difficult. It's the person is the devil. Please, no. It could be the person's threat. There are mm. people who are hard. Mm. She also says the same thing that I'm hard to move. There are mm. people who are hard. Yeah. Talk to so God. talk to God. Mm -hmm. God will talk to the person. Mm -hmm. is it easy? God will okay. change the person. It's not difficult. God to God will transform the person. Mm. But the change begins with you. But the change okay. begins with you because there are things that you God will God, when you pray that God will change the person. Mm. Listen to carefully because so that we don't forget it. You are bidding on it. God might tell you what to start doing. Yes, sir. It might not make sense, but start doing it. Obey God. Mm. Obey the Spirit of God and start doing that thing. The obedience. Once you start doing mm. that. Yeah. Once you start doing that, that the Spirit of God says, mm -hmm. He will not use it yeah. to do what He to wants to do. Wonders for you. To work wonders for you. Yeah. He works in mysterious ways, mm -hmm. but most times He wants to use you. Yeah. Now get um, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians ten, uh, five and six. Okay. That God will work this wonder. When your own obedience is complete, when your own obedience is complete, having a readiness to revenge your disobedience, yeah. When your obedience, yeah, your own is obedience fulfilled. is fulfilled. Okay. When your own obedience is not fulfilled, you want God to change the person. It's a difficult thing. Right, but this English word, he that must come to equity must come with clean hands. Yeah, that's another one. So you, before so, you come to say he's this, look at him so stubborn, so mm -hmm. proud. You, what about you? So, what are the things you are doing mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. are not helping him? Or her, yeah. what are the things that you are not doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there is a food that you will cook. God, as he told the son to go and cook the soup for him before he will bless him. Don't you think there are things that can change the person? You keep doing it and the person will be coming down. And there are things that you need to stop doing. Just pray, the Lord will tell you. Yeah. There is nobody who, who, doesn't, who cannot be mad if you put the fire of madness you need to know what you need to do for this person. You, you can also encourage him to talk to someone. See if he can you know, listen to somebody. See if there's somebody he, he fears, he respects so much, like as in a man of God, whose marriage is also working, okay? People that their, married, uh, their marriages are working already, that is there anyone he likes? Is there anyone you know he respects that he's, he or she is willing to listen to? You know, you can think... Talk to him about, you know, meeting such a person, talking to such a person, you know, hearing counsel from such a person. Just, mm. yeah, calmly talk to him or her about it. My yeah. people say there's a madman has friends. Mm. There must be something, there somebody, somebody good, a mentor. Yeah. Somebody he looks up to that his own marriage or her own marriage is working. Well, not the one that will come and put sand. In fact, Paul fell into the fire that is already burning. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So... Yeah, it could be somebody like that. Just you just need to look around, check, find, talk. But just do that if God led you, so that you will not even worsen it. Okay. Because there are some people you will yeah. report, especially the men. If you mm. even the ladies, you mm. report them. It becomes an issue. It becomes a bigger issue. Yeah, so you took our marriage marriage matter out. <laughs> that becomes another problem. Yeah. Especially those who are proud, it's a problem. Okay. You say, say you took this thing out. Hey, yeah. then you have worsened it. So just do it only because. You're yeah, like. You are led.
but as much as possible, like she said, let me conclude by saying, why not you have a council of two who can cancel both of the, yeah. both of you? Mm -hmm. I have my father in God who cancels us. If this small girl does something, uh -huh. I will tell him and he will call his daughter and tell me, my daughter, what, say, my son said this. And me, she's the one reporting me most times. Say, yeah, my daughter said you did this. <laughs> so she quit because yeah, I don't have a most nice bed. So have somebody who is a counselor who, who knows both of you, who can who can speak to both of you. Nobody is an island. Have a counselor. We're here. I'm not like offering us a bet. I have also my own counselor. So my so please have is going to help you. All right. If you have any other question, any other contribution, you can come up. Otherwise, we're going to pray right now. Yeah. All right, we'll pray for today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we'll thank you because you've helped us. Lord, to every marriage, Lord, our dear, where there is pride. In the name of Jesus, we'll come against the spirit of pride. We'll come against the spirit of self as the mother of pride. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we will put them from such marriages that have listened to us Amen. now. And we declare that they will no rule these marriages again. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we will set them free. Father, we also thank you for today. We pray, Lord, that you would release your mighty power of healing upon every marriage that is hurting out there. Yes. And we'll, Lord, we pray that you release your hand of strength upon all the marriages out there. Lord, upon our younger ones, oh Lord, who want to get into marriage. Yes. Lord, like the brother who, or sister who asked a question, we pray that you will direct them. Yes. Lord, you will help them. Yes. Lord, we pray also, Lord, for our children who are watching. Lord, help them to take the right steps. Yes. Lord, imbibe the right characters. Father, yes. we want to thank you. Mm -hmm. We declare help to every marriage. Amen. We declare healing to those that are hurting. Those that, we declare restoration to those that are down. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answer. Yes. In Jesus' gracious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you Amen. for being part of this meeting. We'll see you again Amen. next week. Amen. Bye.